Is she gonna ask him to marry him? What are they doing over there? No. Casimir, how many field tests have we done now? I don't know, maybe 50, not probably 100, close to 100. I, that's yeah. exactly what it feels like, to be honest. But do you know what field tests are always my favorite? Uh, we've never done a gravel field test. Not yet, Kaz. No, it's the ones with the trail bikes. They're so capable, they can do so much. Yeah, and you know where a really good place to test trail bikes would be? Where? Whistler. Oh, isn't that right there? Right there, yeah. Maybe if we had five of the latest, greatest, trail bikes to test, they're probably pretty fun, huh? And they were sitting right over there. We went and like took a look at them. Uh, that'd be great. Yeah, let's go do that. Switch it up now. All right, Kaz, the first bike that we're gonna talk about is Santa Cruz's new High Tower. Now this bike is all about refinement and not excitement. It's a little bit slacker up front. It's got some new down tube storage and it has a window in the frame so you have an easier time setting up your sag. Travel is the same, Kaz, 145 millimeters out back, 150 millimeters up front. Now this is the Hightower C GX Axis Reserve model. The name just rolls right off the tongue. And that also tells you the parts kit that it comes with. And all that adds up to $9,800 American. Now, our next bike is not any less expensive than that. This is Yeti's SB140. Kaz, this is awfully purple. I thought this thing would be that Yeti teal color. You can get in that color, but this is a new little purple color for the 140. And even though the name is the same, SB140, it's a different model. It's actually closer to the SB130 if you want to get a little confused. Basically, big wheels, 140 millimeters of rear travel, and either a 150 or a 160 millimeter fork, depending on the model. This one's the lunch ride model, so that gets a little bit burlier part spec, the 160 Fox 36. And then you also have like code brakes and just kind of more aimed at the more aggressive rider. Yeah. They've made some changes to the suspension, haven't they? They have, a little bit. Again, this is a, another bike where the story is more about small refinements rather than radical overhauls. Um, you do get a little bit more down tube clearance. They bump that up a little bit, so you're less likely to smack that on rocks, which is nice. Oh, let me try, Kaz. I'll yeah. do it anyway. There's plenty of rocks around here, so we'll see how that works. Um, they've also moved the position of the bearings at the, at the link. They used to be in the carbon frame, and now they're in the aluminum carrier. Everything's designed to make it work more smoothly, um, hopefully make maintenance a little bit easier. You also have a threaded bottom bracket. So I think last one is Press Fit 92, this one threaded. So that's gonna be good news for all the home mechanics out there. Kes, how much does this bike cost? I don't know right now. We're still waiting for that price to come in, but by the time you're watching this, we'll have it right on the screen. It'll show up right here. There, okay, price is right there, but I can tell you it's not cheap. Yetis aren't known for their inexpensive bikes and this one's no exception. The early numbers I saw were quite high. I'd imagine this one's in line with it, especially considering the parts kit on this. Now, the next bike we're gonna look at, Kaz, it kind of reminds me of Blade Runner. Is this thing from the future or is it just me? Look at this thing. Definitely it's part spaceship. Right, this is Scott's new Genius ST Tuned. Kaz, do you know what the ST stands for? I do, but I'll let you tell everybody because it's great. <laughs> Super Trail. <Yes>. And <laughs> what they're getting at there, that's almost as bad as down country. You have to wear a cape when you ride this bike. <laughs> <laughs> So what they're getting at there, this thing is made for descending more than the regular Genius. So that means that it has a piggyback shock, not that you can see it, it's completely hidden inside the frame, although there is a button on the underside of the down tube protector, you press that thing, it pops right off, Kaz. It's pretty clever. Amazing. They thought a lot about the details on this bike. It is yeah. an external sagometer because you can't actually check the sag unless you yeah. put this little thing on the outside. That makes um, complete sense. Yeah. What What is going on up here though? I, I feel like I'm gonna have a stroke just thinking about changing my brakes or something here. That might not make quite as much sense, but we'll dig into that and see how much of a pain it actually is to do changes there. But yes, it does have the cables go through the top bearing and into the frame. So very polarizing. We'll, we'll get to our opinions later, but that's where it goes. It certainly looks clean. It does look clean. Yeah, and of course, because it is a Scott, it uses a twin lock remote here, and that gives you control over the rear suspension. There's a couple, a couple different modes, and because it's the ST, it only controls the rear shock. Thank the Lord for the normal genius that controls the fork and the shock, which we're not interested in. Yeah, this is actually something we've been asking for for a while. Every time we ride a Scott, we always wonder, would it be better if the fork wasn't controlled by this little lockout lever? So now we y get to find out. The answer is yes. It, it will be yes, yeah. yes. Kaz, how much is this bike? This one is also not cheap. We, I'm not gonna apologize for the bikes in this test, but I'm gonna also acknowledge that they're very expensive. We ended up with some fancy ones, but imagine you're watching 
reviews of Lamborghinis and Porsches, you don't wanna watch the budget one. So for this one, it's mostly very expensive bikes, but luckily we're also gonna talk about the more affordable versions of all these bikes as well. This one, getting to the point, 11,000 US dollars. There's not even a motor on it. You were trying to skirt around I know, that. I gotta go back to it, 11 <laughs> grand. Say it. It's expensive, it's super expensive. So um, we'll talk about pros and cons when bikes are that expensive. Also though, there is an aluminum version of this bike that the frame actually looks really similar. They hid the shock inside an aluminum frame. Yeah. So there are less expensive models. Now Kaz, if, let's just say you don't have $11,000 to spend. We got a bike for you guys. This brand new Trek Fuel EX. Kaz, this thing is only $10,800 American. Oh, it's what a deal. I'll take 200 bucks plus expensive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so again, another expensive bike, but another bike that comes in an aluminum version um, and also a wider range of price points. But let's talk about the details itself. It says Fuel X on the top, but that's about all that's the same from this compared to the prior model. Yeah. Um, it's got 140 millimeters of rear travel, 150 fork up front, and it's also mullet compatible. So if you wanted, Trek says you could toss a 160 fork on it um, and put a 27.5 inch rear wheel. Uh, and then the frame itself has tons of little clever details that make it super adjustable. So it's got the typical middle link, the high and low position, but then you also have aftermarket headset cups that let you change that head angle by up to a degree. Yeah. And then if you look towards the front, you can change the progression of the rear shock. So this is the first coil compatible fuel EX that we've seen. Before we go on to our last bike, I just want to give Trek a shout out here because we've been complaining about minnow links adjusting basically nothing, like a couple of millimeters and a third of a degree or whatever. But you could take this head angle, Kaz, 63.5 to 65.5. It's coil shock compatible because you could adjust the progression down there. Like this is a bike that can do a lot of different things and it looks a hell of a lot more capable than that original Fuel EX from you know previous generation. Kaz, I almost want to call it a remedy, but. It's so close to a remedy. <laughs> and also we should mention it does have snack storage, another bike with in-frame storage. So you've got that as well. But so tons of features, really adjustable. Yeah, it's gonna be fun to ride. Yeah, let's show them our last bike, which you guys might not be expecting. First of all, it's aluminum. This is Norco's Fluid FS1. Kaz, do you know how much this entire bike costs? I do, and it's, in some cases, you can get three of these versus one of those. It's right. 3,999 US dollars, so exactly. four grand. Um, with Fox's high-end suspension, Casima coating, TRP brakes, SLX drivetrain, I think. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And the big story here, though, is the geometry. So what Norco has done is they've brought the ride align geometry to the lowest price point ever. That means size specific chain stays. It also means a huge range of reaches to choose from. And yeah, I mean, we're gonna see how this aluminum $4,000 bike compares to some of those super bikes behind us. Now, it's not exactly a fair fight, but it's gonna be interesting. Yeah, it does have a little less travel than some of the other ones. I don't yeah. know if we mentioned that. It's got 130 millimeters of rear travel, 140 up front, so a little bit less, but again, falls in that aggressive trail bike category. So we'll be taking that in all the trails around here and seeing how it fares. So those are our five bikes. And Kaz, we're gonna be riding the hell out of them all over the Whistler Valley trails. Now there's plenty of goodness here, as steep and as rowdy as you wanna get. And of course, now these are just trail bikes, so we're not gonna to get too crazy, but we might go to the bike park a little bit. Just, just don't tell anybody. And to help us out in the bike park and in the other trails, we've got Maxxis providing control tires this time around. We also have G-Form providing protection, make sure that our knees and hands survive all the rocks and other things around here. And as with all field tests, there's more to this series than just the reviews, Kaz. We also do the efficiency tests that I'm sure everybody can't wait for, the impossible climb, and we're gonna wrap this all up with the huck to flat. And as with all of our previous field tests, Make sure to like, subscribe, update your RSS feed, check the internet every couple minutes so you don't miss any of them. Kaz, did we just do this whole thing in one take? We might have. This is, it's like a, what do they call it? A long one shot? There's like a word the fancy film guys could Yeah. Yeah, we did it. We don't know the word, but no, we, did we did it. Okay, let's get out of here before we screw it up.